YouTube, how's it going? The Goat House is back. And we're only a few days away from the 2020 NFL trade deadline. A lot of crazy rumors going around there. We have a bunch of videos on the trade deadline, predictions, what to expect already on the channel. More to come. We'll have grades on the big deals that get done. In this video, though, we're going to take a look at some, some scenarios. We're going to take a look at trades that we would love to see. First, I got the trades that I really want to see at the trade deadline. Uh, I think they're very realistic at the same time. Uh, and then Patreon members got involved. Uh, we have a Patreon bunch of extra content you show your support and you get involved in things like these uh they posted some good uh trades that they would love to see so i picked the uh, the ones that i really like there put them on here uh and then we we got uh we made a post on twitter and i chose one a lot of people got involved with that i chose one there to make the cut here um so follow that twitter always stuff like that going down uh and then anytime news breaks we'll, we'll discuss it smaller trades we'll give grades uh and then the big trades of course on youtube we'll have grades instagram uh, podcast. I talked about the Patreon. We'll talk a little more in a second. 60K, that's our subscriber goal. Almost there. Appreciate the support. Full NFL coverage here, unlike anyone else. So please subscribe. We much appreciate it. But that Patreon, you getting involved in videos like these, more, more things like this uh, on the way. But junior score predictions, my bets of the week for NFL and college football. Updated playoff predictions every single week, round by round, and play uh, and Super Bowl bonus content, Discord access, and again, always adding more. Let's start with my trades. Uh, we got my trades, and then we got a Dan Cheese trade for the Bears, and then we got some Patreon members, then we got our Twitter trade. Um, yeah, so I'm, I, we heard of the Packers called the Texans about Will Fuller, and I'm loving the idea of that. I'm, I'm a diehard Notre Dame and Minnesota Vikings fan, pretty random, but Notre Dame fighting Irish, Minnesota Vikings. Um, so that means, uh, uh, you know, because the Notre Dame part, I love me some Will Fuller. So him going to the Packers, you'd think wouldn't really – I wouldn't really enjoy it too much, but I really like the idea. That kind of excites me. Will Fuller with Aaron Rodgers in that offense. You know, this the speed. He's more than a deep threat, though. You know, a lot of people view him as a deep threat, but I think he, you know, it's a guy that the pa a type of receiver that the Packers really haven't had, and a guy that they've been kind of been missing, and you know, home run hitting guy. Um, you know, still young. They would have to extend him after the season, but I think this is what it would take for the Texans to get rid of. It might take more, you know, because they like him a lot. Obviously, a big piece of their offense. See him in the past, you know, when he's been out of games, you know, they really missed him. When he was in the games, they were really good offensively. So it actually could take more than this. They they plan to extend him, but he's not off limits. A second and a sixth for Will Fuller. I think the Packers should do this. It's something I would like to see because I think it's a great fit. It would be. Very fun to see that. You know, it's not really, you know, they've had good deep threats and shifty, speedy guys, but I don't know if they've had that Will Fuller for Aaron Rodgers. You know, Randall Cobb was pretty damn good in his, in his prime, but I think Will Fuller is different. I think it's a different type of player. So it's something that's realistic and that I would love to see, but again, it could actually take a little more for this for the Texans to, to part with him. Let's see another one that I would love to see. Uh, the Vikings uh, training Anthony Harris to the Washington football team. We talked about the Browns. I've predicted the Browns in the offseason. I think it's a good fit. I think they'll be interested. But another team I think will be interested, but maybe a little less likely to do it than the Browns. Um, I would like this better, actually, for Washington. Anthony Harris, the free safety of the Vikings. Uh, the Vikings get a third-round pick. Maybe teams wouldn't get – maybe it would take a fourth – or maybe teams would only give up a fourth and maybe a late round pick. But looking at Washington, they actually have two third round picks. They have their own, which is going to be earlier in the third round. And they have the 49ers. So I think they'd be willing to send the 49ers third round pick to the Vikings for safety, Anthony Harris. Why I would love Anthony Harris for the Washington football team. Is because they need a big time playmaker in the back end because they got that front, they got that front seven, they got that defensive line that's going to get pressure, continue to get pressure, and pressure QB hurries that causes quarterback uh, interesting quarterback decisions and that cr get creates turnover uh, potential plays. Anthony Anthony Harris almost said Davis. Anthony Harris is a playmaker in the back end. Will get his hands on the ball. Um, he's a, one of the better playmakers at the safety position. So I think that would be perfect for Washington. Um, and really, I don't know if Washington has that many needs. It feels like it just because their offense isn't that good. But then, you know, the, you pick up a guy like this, and then you can focus the whole draft on offense. And that's ideal for, for Washington there. So I like this for both teams. It would be tough for the Vikings to lose him, but they're probably going to lose him in free agency anyways. Uh, in terms of the compensatory pick, they would get a third or a fourth in 2022. Um, you know, you might as well trade him for around this value, and I think Washington can really benefit uh, from getting a playmaker in the back end like this. So I would love that for them. 
Next, uh, pretty interesting one here. The Browns, who they could trade for Anthony Harris. They might be in a market for an edge rusher, apparently. They may trade Olivia Vernon. Uh, I think they can really benefit from getting a, a really solid slot corner that also has experience at outside, also has experience at the safety position. I think he actually can play free, which all of the above the Browns could use right now. But I would I would actually like him for them now and the future in the slot. I think they can really benefit from benefit from a really good slot corner. Uh, so Desmond King and and I thought they would give a seventh round pick back because a fourth. Fourth straight up for Desmond King might be a little rich right now because the Chargers really aren't playing him a whole bunch. You know, he was really good for them a couple years ago. They haven't really played him a bunch since, which is kind of odd. So, the, and, you know, he's going to be a free agent. The Chargers get a fourth round pick. The Browns get Desmond King in a seventh round pick. Just something that just, you know, kind of clicked in my head there, went off in my head. Just thought it made a lot of sense for, for both teams, really. You know, surprised the Chargers aren't using him a whole bunch more. They do use him, you know, a bit, but uh, I think it's a guy that deserves more snaps, quite honestly. Uh, next, uh, another one have to do with the Washington football team and the Raiders. You know, I thought you know the Raiders, really good offense. Their defense is letting them down. They do have their moments though. Uh, I think their secondary is actually better than what we're seeing. Uh, not nothing crazy, but better than what we're seeing. They're just not getting any pass rush. Too much is on Max Crosby. I think in Max Crosby moves around a bit. You know, he's a defensive end, but he can slide inside a bit. I think you need a true edge rusher opposite of him or even on the outside of him when if he slides in uh, that that's known for getting after the quarterback Ryan Kerrigan is available you know I thought you could you could he could go for a third round pick but a fourth round pick this year in a 2022 six so what if what if Washington traded for Anthony Harris like we had and then got you know some picks back like this for Ryan Kerrigan that would be ideal for them an ideal situation but for the Raiders as well I think a guy like Ryan Kerrigan makes their pass rush that much better but then then you bring up the debate you know maybe you don't do this unless you you're confident you want to extend him or you can or you want to either one um because a rental what teams should only be renting if they're going to win the Super Bowl and they might have the confidence over there and you can't disagree with the confidence but or then you kind of question are they really going to do it are they really in the market to be renting somebody so that's the only downside but I would like this a lot you know I think Kerrigan fits on a 4-3 or a 3-4 at the edge rush position this would help the Raiders they're just not getting enough pressure they're not getting enough sacks but plain and simple uh, in Washington, they like Montez Sweat. They like Chase Young. They're not you, Kerrigan's not getting a whole bunch of snaps. It feels like it's a guy that definitely should be traded at the deadline, but we'll see. Maybe they feel like they'll get a better compensatory pick, but we will see. Uh, back to the Chargers trading away somebody. I would like Melvin Ingram for the Colts. You know, the only downside for this, the Colts defense has been very solid. Um, they, they really need offense. So trading for a defense player, I guess that's the only negative, but I can kind of debate that. Um, their defense has started off really good. Uh, and it's going to continue to be very good. I just don't know if it'll be at, you know, looking at their schedule, they're playing a lot of offense teams. So I don't know if it'll stay that good. I think they need, they really need more edge rush. You know, Justin Houston, maybe a little underwhelming. DeForest Buckner's an absolute monster from the inside. They got other stud guys, you know, Darius Leonard. I mean, their, their secondary is pretty pretty balanced I'd say uh, they're very tight in coverage very very well disciplined uh, in coverage uh, and in the tackling game coming up to support the run so that's why I like their defense if they got a, a legit edge rusher uh, that defense can be damn scary Melvin Ingram could be available you see the Chargers with and without him it's another downside about Melvin Ingram he's had some minor injuries pop up but the Chargers with and without him huge difference so maybe they don't want to get rid of him uh, but it kind of feels like they're getting, they're kind of pushing him out the door a little bit. Kind of feels like that. I'm not saying they're going to trade him, but they, they may let him go in free agency. It feels like they haven't really decided yet. I think it would take a bit because the Chargers may want to keep him. So a third and a and next year fifth um, isn't really, you know, the Colts, that's doable by the Colts. And then paying Melvin Ingram and extending Melvin Ingram is very, very doable by the Colts. They have plenty of cap space. I think it's a time that, you know, they start using it. You know, I understand not burning it all like an idiot, but. I mean, you got to want to get better. And I think an edge rusher like this, you know, forget Justin Houston for the future. Maybe Melvin Ingram. But, yeah, how, where's his health at for the future because he's getting older? But it's a guy that moves around everywhere. You can see him rush from the outside, the inside, off the ball, uh, in the inside, outside, on the line, inside, outside. You get the picture. He makes everyone around him better, including that DeForest Buckner, including Justin Houston for now. Some of the young guys, they have Darius Leonard, you know, on the back end. They're the linebacker position. Um, so that would make a lot of sense. I think that make the, it would make the defense that much better. They could afford to give up these draft picks they have the cast base I, I i think it would make the colts defense like w actually you know they've been playing like one of the top defenses but i'm still confident that they're there's a few that i think are better down the stretch of the season 
Uh, but this would make them you know, arguably the best defense in football if Ingram stays healthy. The Chargers gain picks for another guy that they may lose, we'll see, uh, in free agency. They, they do have a lot of cap space, but they do have to re-sign a lot of guys. And, of course, you want to go out and get better because you want to win now um, and sign new guys to your team as well. So we'll see. Uh, another one, Tech McKinley, it sounds like he will be traded and trying to figure out uh, best fit and where it could benefit that team and you know and him the most. How about the Chiefs? How about the Chiefs? Uh, they actually have a little bit of cap space this year. People kind of confused by that, but they extended guys. They didn't give anybody more money this year, really. Um, you know, so Tack McKinley could be a rental, but it also could be that guy that they could get back for really cheap and they actually could pay in the future because he hasn't really done it, you know a whole bunch. Um, and you know, maybe he can get a taste of that winning attitude, you know, that win that winning, uh, part of football. And he just want to come back for cheaper, but tag McKinley still got a lot of upside. I, I think teams will be fighting for him uh, to trade for him for a cheaper draft pick. Uh, and that could actually draw his value up maybe around, you know, fifth round pick rather than maybe a sixth and a seventh. Um, so why not for the chiefs? You know, they got a bunch of rotation guys opposite of Frank Clark, but I think they can get better. I think McKinley could be a solid, solid option there opposite of Frank Clark. And I think he could actually... Uh, become better than what he has been. Uh, I think he fits a 4-3 or a 3-4 for a 3-4 team. I was really thinking the Rams. I think he really benefit, really benefit from going to the Rams. But um, I don't know if they, I, I didn't do that because uh, Leonard Floyd's playing really good, and now they're getting Terrell Lewis going as well, uh, of course, with their other uh, edge rushers as well. So, you know, around Aaron Donald and their blitz game, I think that, you know, he really benefits. You, you can really help yourself as an edge rusher playing in that system, especially with their new, uh, somewhat new defense. They, sw they switch defense coordinators, uh, a little more blitzing. Uh, so I do like that. The Falcons, yeah, they're going to move out from either way. He's not working out there. He's going he's gonna to leave. You know, if, if they let him leave him free agency, um, they're going to get way less than a fifth round pick. They, they, they'll get a seventh at best because no one's going to pay him based off his Falcons performance. So you might as you have to do this, I think, in, in my opinion. You have to. And it's, it might hurt because he could end up being better than what he – definitely, I think he will end up being better than what he was in the Falcons, but it just wasn't working there. It's not working. So how about the Chiefs? They might be able to make the sneaky move here. We'll see. Um, you know, I'd say most likely it might be another team, you know, if I had to put money on it, but it's something I would really like, and I do think it's very realistic. Uh, here's the Danny trade inspired by the Danny Provolone here on the channel. He's a huge Bears fan, and he's thinking we were kind of thinking together. You know, they they need they need an offensive lineman because they're really beat up. But the pass on obvious passing downs, the pass protect, protection from the interior is not cutting it. Um, and their running game is really not there either. It might have something to do with the offensive line a little bit, but does Montgomery have the speed to get through the hole and make that home run ability play that big play? I don't know if he does. He's a, he's a solid back, but is he your legit starting you know number one? How about we can get two players from the Patriots? I'm trying to think of a team, but we can get two two for out of that. And we came up with you know Danny and I came up with the with, with the Patriots. Um, you know, he's, th he's thinking, how about one of those Patriots running backs? Yeah, James White is a guy they would like because that's kind of that speed and that, and that pass catching ability that they really need. You know, they are missing Tariq Cohen, but, uh, you know, greatly because of the speed, pass catching ability. But is Tariq Cohen a guy that's going to handle a load, uh, you know, running inside? Uh, James White can do that. So Joe Tooney, James White. I haven't heard much on James White, but Joe Tooney could be on the block. He could be traded. They're both going to be free agents. Uh, I think for the for the package, maybe a second and a sixth round pick in the future, which the only downside is I think the Bears have been trading too many picks over the past. Uh, but you get offense here, which you desperately, desperately need. And they would have to extend them, but I don't think they would have any problem. It's definitely Joe Tooney. They would have no problem. Um, yeah, I think you need to start investing some money on offense here. Uh, and then James White, which I think is a really good fit. You know, I, I think uh, – Splitting, you know, the rest of this year, splitting between James White and Montgomery. I think, uh, I think James. You don't want to get obvious, but James White on passing downs, but David Montgomery mainly on short yardage, uh, goal line, which they kind of been doing the opposite. They've been kind of going Cordero Patterson on like the fourth and third down, which is kind of odd, um, you know. And then keep in mind, Patterson's really not a running back, even though they switched them there. So you just get a lot better with White. But mainly the, the big one is Joe Tooney there, who's a really good guard, which they can use. Uh, you know, and then when they're when they're healthy, they could use Tooney, James Daniels, Cody Whitehair, uh, and the interior all at the same time could be pretty appealing. But the Patriots, uh, they're open for business right now. They're definitely open for business, but they're not going to be giving the guys away. So second round pick, uh, then a future six there. If they lost these guys in free agency, what kind of compensatory pick would they get? They would probably, I'd say they probably get a third for Joe Tooney. 
Um, a third for Joe Tooney and, a, and maybe a six for James White. So why a second and a six? Well, they may want to get one of these or both these guys back. They're pretty attached for James White, so they don't have to trade them. They might want them back. So that's why it's a little richer than that. Second and a six there uh, to get them right now to help the Bears compete right now. So I actually, it's a long shot because two players involved, two picks, mainly the two-player part. Um, but I like it. You know, it's a, it's a good idea here Danny had. Um, you know, I, I really like this one. That would be very cool if it happened. Uh, some of our Patreon members, a lot of people sending in Gilmore ones. And it's funny because I was actually making this exact trade. And Jeff D, appreciate your support on the on the Patreon. The, the, the top tier Patreon members got the chance to be. I made several posts. Maybe not everyone didn't see it, but the, the, the highest tier Patreon members Got to be involved in that. I really appreciate your guys' support if you're part of that Patreon. A lot of people contributed. So, Jeff D., thank you very much, sir. Um, I had, I, he, we're on the same page here. And I think he was back and forth between a first – or the first is there. A third and a fourth. I had the same idea to the Titans for a fourth-round pick along with the first. So, I like, we're on the same page. Love it. Um, would I really want to see this one happen because the Patriots are open for business here. They don't really want to give him the – remember, he's under contract next year, but he wants to, he wants a raise or an extension – both maybe, um, you know, and the Patriots don't look like they're going to win anytime you know soon. They could turn it around pretty quick though. That's the thing. The Titans look like a legit team right now, um, but they their defense has been disappointing. Their their corners are allowing separation way too early. Dory Jackson has been hurt, but he's you know he's not he's not a guarantee really. You know to stay healthy or be anything. I mean he's solid, but anything great of course. So you had Stephon Gilmore. Vrabel will definitely be interested in this. Grabbing a lot of Patriot. Proven corner. They can extend in the future. They get a lot better with this. Imagine if they get Gilmore and Adoree Jackson back at the same time. And they have Malcolm Butler in there as well. They probably could slide Adoree Jackson in the slot, actually. That would be a scary secondary. Because you know, their safeties are carrying the load big time. I like their safeties. Uh, but they like Vicaro coming up in the box a bit. So he's not helping too much covering in the back end. I would love this a lot. So Jeff D's on the right page here. I think it's possible it could happen. That's pretty crazy. I think it's possible. Uh, we got more Gilmore ones. We're going to get a little wild here, ladies and gentlemen, uh, a as we go on. Um, this one from Cameron Sullivan. Cameron, really appreciate your support there, uh, signing up for the Patreon, the top tier on the, on the Patreon. Uh, so he, he's got the Lions and the Patriots making a deal. If I had to adjust this one, I'd probably adjust it a little bit, actually. I think the Patriots probably would get more. You know, Marvin Jones honestly could be their best receiver right off the bat. Um, so that that's kind of the positive. A second round pick, maybe a first round would be a little rich. So maybe Marvin Jones a second, and then another mid round pick, maybe a third or something like that. Uh, but I think they would like Marvin Jones. I think he'd probably be their best receiver, honestly, because uh, Edelman's starting to decline. He's dropping the ball a bit. Um, I think he could have been on the block if he um, if if he didn't get hurt. And the Lions get Stephon. Stephon um, Gilmore there uh they they have they have a few corners you know they have their their guy Jeff Akui they drafted high Amani Aruarie uh they actually like a bit too and they have Desmond Jufon but they get a lot better with Gilmore imagine Gilmore Akuda of the for the future there that'd be something back with Matt Patricia something I just realized now back with Matt Patricia there um who's the head coach of the Lions you know and they're Another thing you bring up about Patricia Bob Quinn, they're on. They're, they're, this is it. This is it for them. You know, so they're going to be making trades or looking to make deals to help them win now. Because if they don't win now, they're gone. You know, um, you know, and the Patriots save a lot of money with this. They finally get a receiver they may like. So I like where his head's at here for this one. Uh, let's get even crazier. Let's get. I mean, let's get really crazy here from Raymond Mira on the Patreon. Really appreciate your support there, sir. Uh, he got he went wild here, and he, he's he's not predicting this to happen. He knows it's a little out there. Stephon Gilmore's name has come up, come up. Michael Thomas, the stud, maybe the best receiver in football from the Saints. His name has come up because a you know, fight with the teammate, the offseason situation with Breeze, which really doesn't seem to be a, that big of a problem right now. Uh, but yeah, he's a guy that could want more money in the future as well uh, because he did get just. Did get his money, but um, you know he might be the best receiver in football. And more guys are getting paid, you know, ridiculous money. So who knows? Uh, but the Saints, Gilmore, Patriots, Michael Thomas, just a swap would be absolutely wild. There, you know, I would say, I would say the Patriots would probably have to give up something, a pick in there as well. I mean, nothing major. I think getting Michael Thomas and a guy that they might be getting rid of anyways, an aging an aging corner, even though he's great, maybe the best in football even for years to come, 
maybe the Patriots would have to give up a mid-round pick, fourth round, maybe. Uh, you know, just my thinking right now. But this would be wild. You know, Michael Thomas did just get a bonus uh, from the Saints, so that they, it would be tough to trade him after get paying that. Uh, it was a pretty big one too. I don't know the exact number on the top of my head, but uh, but the Saints, yeah, their secondary base, they're playing without Michael Thomas, and they can be for a little bit here. So they're already playing without him. Their secondary is pretty weak right now, really weak. You know, on the on the deep shots. Uh, they're letting too many guys behind them. I feel like they're chasing guys a lot. You know, I do like that they'll come up and tackle, and they'll they're fine on the short. You know, the short game. Um, you know, so they can benefit. They could benefit from this. You know, not having Michael Thomas is pretty tough, though. But that's interesting. It's definitely an interesting one to think about. Uh, Raymond Mira again. Uh, the Patriots always looking for that tight end, athletic tight end. So maybe Evan Ingram. I, I think I I can't remember the exact one that he had. But I think I adjusted it a little bit. I think Evan Ingram in a six round pick to the Patriots. Uh, in the Giants get a fourth round pick. So he's not working out for the Giants. He's highly disappointing. Uh, he's dropping the ball. He's caught. He's really costing them at times with dropping the ball. But he still has that upside. Still has ability to get better. And I still think the Giants kind of like him. So, but they can get a fourth round pick in return. Um, yeah, but is he worth a straight up fourth in value? So that's why the six going back. But the Patriots would probably like to have this guy. So it's something that can, it probably not going to happen. But I can see it. You know, you can see kind of the connection with the Patriots and the the Giants maybe Alamu because he's been dis disappointing. So I like where Raymond's head's at here. Uh, uh, back to Cameron Sullivan. He he thought that the Quinn and Williams. Uh, maybe it does happen. They're not actively trading him, but they're taking calls. He's been a little disappointing. I, you know. To most people, I, I still like what I see. You still, he, I, I can see the talent. You know, he's a, he's about to just break through. Um, it might take a first, but it could take a package of things outside the one. So, how about a second? And I think I adjusted this one a little bit too. A second and a 2022 fourth from the Seahawks. So the Seahawks continue to add pass rush on the D line. Quinn Williams will probably play interior for them, but when he was at Alabama, you saw him at. You saw him at D tackle, three technique, nose tackle, defensive end, getting pressure. This is their that's something I just thought. This is their Quentin Jefferson, who they lost last year to the Seahawks. This is the same exact style player with a lot more upside. The Seahawks are really missing Quentin Jefferson because he played all over and got pass rush from all over the interior of the end. Uh, so I think that that's the that's their Quentin Jefferson. They get Quentin Williams uh, in there with a ton of upside. It may take a little more than this, but I would love this. I would love this. Can they make it cap wise? Can they make it work? They need to, they really need to ship off uh, Hollister. Maybe we could have thrown Hollister uh, to the Jets in this if they would be interested. Uh, that's a guy that could trade to clear some more space uh, that I've heard. So uh, I actually like this one more and more. You know, now that you brought it up and now that we're talking about it, because that, that's kind of their Quentin. He's the same style player. He's a, he's a more upside version of Quentin Jefferson. I uh, like that a lot. Um, and then one more from Twitter. I asked people from Twitter. I had, I adjusted this a little bit, uh, and a bunch of people respond. A lot of you had the Gilmore, which people beat you to the punch there with the Gilmore and some of the ones that I had, Anthony Harris. So I apologize. But, yeah, this was mainly for uh, the Patreon members to come up with. You know, So Twitter, you guys kind of getting in here for free. But I said I would pick one that I liked, and it was a lot of ones that, we again, we already had. And this one kind of caught my eye a little bit. And it's, it's probably not going to happen, but from Pan to Killer 99 he said Derek Barnett, and you can see on the bottom right there, Derek Barnett to the Raiders. We talk about the Raiders need more pass rush. They need it pretty badly. Uh, and the Eagles get a fourth-round pick in Tyrell Williams. Interesting because Tyrell Williams is hurt. Uh, can you trade a hurt player? But I think he can come back. I think that you know the Raiders aren't too happy with him. He said he can. Tyra Williams said he can play. So I think you might be able to trade him. I, I don't know the exact details on that. Uh, but I don't. The problem is the Eagles with the cap space situation. They can make it work now, but their future cap with with, with Tyra Williams wouldn't work at all. And they're trying to dump Alshon Jeffrey. So let's throw Alshon Jeffrey in there. So the Raiders actually might might like Alshon better than Tyra Williams. To be honest, they both have the injury concerns, but the Raiders probably like him better. Uh, Tyra Williams younger has more upside. I know for a fact that the Eagles would like Tyra Williams. They would rather have Tyra Williams or Alshon Jeffrey. They're the Eagles because they're in cap space hell in the future. They're probably not going to be be able to re-sign Derek Barnett, who's kind of been a lot of upside. I like him a lot, but you know you expect a little more. Uh, I graded him as a three-four end. Um, but yeah, going to the Raiders, you'd play a four-three end. I still like him there, uh, but I would really like him to go through to a three-four team, play a little three-four end. But uh, we'll see. 
Um, but he could slide around kind of like Max Crosby as well. So Derek Barnett, I added, I edited it by throwing Alshon Jeffrey. They dumped that cap for now in the future. Derek Barnett, Alshon Jeffrey to the Raiders. Eagles get Tyrell Williams and somewhere around the fourth round pick. Tough to decide which pick. So I really like this idea. It's something that I can like, I can see. It's like I can call it kind of realistic. I don't see. It's probably not going to happen. But yeah, I liked it. it it's you know, it's something that. Um, yeah, made something kind of a light go off in my head there. I, I kind of like that one. And it's kind of out. It's kind of a little unique. That's kind of what I was looking for too uh, on Twitter. But we have a lot of things keeping you guys involved on Twitter as well. But the Patreon members, more things like that, like this, you know, where you guys are heavily involved. But there's a lot of bonus content on there as well and more coming. And that's what it's mainly about. And then showing your support to our channel. So I really appreciate those guys. There's a lot more of you out there. An insane amount of people are signing up every single day. So I we're, we're blown away by the support. So Really appreciate that. So it's pretty cool to see. We got to see some of these trade scenarios, but we got all kinds. Just go to the channel, click on videos, all kind of trade deadline videos. The last week have come out. Again, we're going to have probably another one with my final predictions on Monday, and then probably, or no, definitely big, the big trades with the grades. And, uh, you know, on Twitter, we have you covered as well. So check it all out. Full NFL coverage. Subscribe, turn notifications on, click that like button. We much, much appreciate it. That's going to do it for this one, though. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.